Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says the military needs more time to prepare for the highly anticipated counteroffensive. Speaking in an interview, Mr. Zelensky said that it would be unacceptable to launch an assault now because too many lives would be lost. Among the supplies Ukraine is waiting for are armored vehicles, including tanks, which Zelensky said were arriving in batches. They include German Leopard 2S and British Challenger 2S, along with other armored vehicles such as American Bradleys and Strikers. Mr. Zelensky's comments come a day after the U.S. announced a new $1.2 billion aid package to Ukraine intended to bolster air defenses and sustain ammunition supplies. And the U.K. has confirmed it's supplying Ukraine with long-range missiles it requested for its fight against invading Russian forces. The Storm Shadow cruise missile has a range of over 250 kilometers. That's according to the manufacturer. By contrast, the U.S. supplies HIMARS missiles used by Ukraine only have a range of around 80 kilometers. The weapons will give Ukraine new capabilities as it prepares a counteroffensive against Russia. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said the alliance needed to ramp up its weapon production as he opened a meeting of defense chiefs. Since the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, NATO has asked its members to raise their ammunition stockpiles, which have been badly depleted, with allies trying to put arms supplies to Kyiv and their own militaries on a sustainable footing. Even before the war, many NATO countries fell short of meeting the alliance's stockpiling targets as officials considered wars of attrition with large-scale artillery battles a thing of the past. Meanwhile, NATO Military Committee Chairman Admiral Rob Bauer says NATO doesn't see China as a threat and is not working on military plans against Beijing. Relations between China and NATO's leading member, the United States, sank to a low last year when then-U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited democratically governed Taiwan, which claims the island as its territory. In response, Beijing severed several formal communication channels with the United States, including one between their militaries. Tensions eased in November when U.S. and Chinese leaders Joe Biden and Xi Jinping met at a G20 summit in Indonesia and pledged more frequent dialogue. NATO sees China not as a threat, but as a challenge. And, uh, and, and the difference is when we talk about these uh, military plans is that NATO is not working on military plans against China. We are working on military plans against Russia and the terrorist groups. That's where the plans are focusing on. That is where the force structure requirements are focusing on. Uh, and I think um, that is what we will see now is that the, the, uh, the, the Russians will focus, have to focus on quantity, larger number of conscripts and mobilized people, not well trained, older material, but large numbers, and not as precise and not as good as the newer ones, and that the Ukrainians focus on quality uh, with Western weapon systems and uh, Western training. Turkish Forest Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu said he thought the Ukraine Black Sea grain deal could be extended for at least two more months as officials from the parties involved held the first day of talks on an extension in Istanbul. Cavusoglu, speaking to the media on his return from a trip to Moscow, said the grain deal was among the issues he discussed with his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, and he hoped a positive result could be achieved in Istanbul, where talks were set to continue. The U.N. and Turkey brokered the Black Sea export agreement last July to help tackle a global food crisis that has been worsened by Moscow's war in Ukraine. Officials from Russia, Ukraine, Turkey and the U.N. make up a joint coordination center in Istanbul, which implements the deal.
Meanwhile, the Kremlin declined to comment on the progress of talks aimed at extending the Black Sea grain deal, which facilitates the export of grain from Ukrainian ports. Moscow has threatened to quit the agreement on May 18 unless what it refers to as obstacles to its grain and fertilizer exports are lifted. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told reporters that Russia's position was well known and that work on the deal was underway. The United Nations said inspections resumed on Tuesday of outbound vessels under a deal allowing the safe Black Sea export of Ukraine grain. Ukrainian mobile anti-drone units based in northern regions received eight new pickup trucks, which they say will help combat Russian drones. Volunteers collected funds and bought the vehicles, which were then equipped with heavy-duty anti-aircraft machine guns. The vehicles were handed over to the military at a ceremony yesterday. Serhi Naev, commander of the Joint Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, said units defending Kyiv and the northeastern Sumy region would receive the trucks. Ukraine's state of emergency services are clearing unexplored and unexploded weapons from rural areas along last year's front line in Mykolaiv region months after Russia's retreat. A Ukrainian counteroffensive in November 2022 pushed Russian troops out of most of the Mykolaiv region and parts of Kherson. The village of Blahodatin heavily suffered from the war as it found itself on the front line for several months before Ukraine retook it. Demining officer Vladislav Ritsai, after successfully blowing up helicopter rocket remnants in a controlled explosion, said that such weapons were used to fire on military positions and vehicles. He added that Russian forces held positions in the field his unit demined. Prime Minister Denis Shimhal said in late April that about 30 percent of Ukrainian territory had been mined by Russians and that the government was focused on demining agricultural land as quickly as possible. And now we have a Voice of America's Anna Chernikova, who joins me now from Kiev. Thank you for joining us today. Anna, my first question is, the UK has confer confirmed it is supplying Ukraine with long-range missiles it requested for its fight against invading Russian forces. Now, do you think that this news would stir up the morale of Ukrainian troops ahead of the awaited counteroffensive? Good evening. Uh, well, definitely this is um, well a storming news uh, in Ukraine today, and uh, um, this is something uh, long awaited. And um, uh, of course, uh, it should be it should be really uh, you know a great strengthen of the Ukrainian army of the U of the weapons that Ukraine uh, is getting and. Um, ask, answering your question regarding um, Ukrainian uh, military morale, well, I guess, yes, I guess this is something that creates additional, you know, uh, additional reasons uh, for Ukrainian uh, military to feel, um, to, to feel certain privileged uh, weapons arriving and uh, additional possibilities for uh, for liberating of the territories. So definitely this is a great news and this is um, a very, and the fact that it's been confirmed uh, and announced uh, is actually also very, uh, I guess, important, uh, particularly at this point of time, because uh, Ukrainian officials uh, remain quite um, silent about what exactly is coming into the country. Uh, and uh, not only Ukrainian officials, but all, also allies. So we hear about possi possible uh, arriving of uh, possible arriving of uh, that and this weapon uh, and equipment. And we hear time to time we hear confirmations. But uh, at, uh, but in general, uh, if we talk about long range missiles, 
uh, this is uh, the first time uh, we hear this official confirmation, and uh, we are uh, waiting for Ukrainian uh, official reaction on that, which I guess will come uh, will come later on. And, but Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says Ukraine still needs a bit more time before it launches its counteroffensive as Kyiv's forces await the arrival of more weapons, which you were mentioning from their Western allies. Now, we know now that some of the weapons have already arrived to Ukraine. Um, in your opinion, Anna, what timeline do you think is the right time for Kyiv to go ahead with the counteroffensive? You know, um, it's difficult to answer directly for for a person who has no operational information from the front line but uh definitely uh ukrainian forces should not rush uh and this is uh this is something that um ukrainian officials understand very well and uh this is exactly what president zelensky said that it's not only about uh weapons available or Mm, uh, weather or any other conditions uh, that might play a great role in 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 here, but it's also about uh, saving people lives uh, as a priority. And uh, Ukrainian, it, it looks like that Ukrainian officials are trying to get uh, all the weapons uh, all all, uh, all together at once before beginning this uh, active phase of counteroffensive uh, and. Um, this looks quite, uh, you know, this looks quite logical. And what we're hearing from Ukrainian military, um, it's similar message that uh, we will not rush. We better wait until we have enough equipment at once uh, to start this phase. Because um, we should understand that counteroffensive is ongoing. It just is happening in different parts of the front line. And uh, what everyone is waiting for is this active phase and everyone is expecting something huge, possibly something that uh, was happening in the Kharkiv region and in the Kherson region. But again, we have to understand that, um, well, every, uh, so what we're expecting and what is really going to happen uh, might be different. And of course, uh, in Ukraine, everyone have this hope that uh, when it's enough weapon and when it's enough training uh, and when the army is ready, uh, this counteroffensive might get uh, the most uh, positive result. So uh, this is very important and uh, uh, allies also understand this and we hear from different international um, author, uh, officials and uh, experts that Ukraine should wait until it is ready and feels ready, the military feels ready and equipment is there. So uh, I think that, um, uh, well, in terms of timeline, it really is difficult to, to predict, but uh, I guess uh, we might enter summer time, uh, but uh, we will see again. It's very, very, um, it's very, really difficult to predict to someone who has no operational uh, information of the whole front line. And uh, there are only a couple of people, uh, I think, in this world who have. And this question is more about uh, centered on Bakhmut. Now, the Wagner boss has accused a unit of Russia's 72nd Brigade of abandoning its position in frontline Bakhmut. That really allowed Ukraine to seize territory with how dramatic this whole battle for Bakhmut is, with a lot of back and forth from both the Russian and Ukrainian sides. Anna, has the Ukrainian forces really truly advanced in Bakhmut? Uh, we have confirmation from Ukrainian officials that uh, in certain area, Ukrainian forces really had advanced. And um, this advance uh, looks like uh, pushing Russian forces back uh, for at least two kilometers. This was confirmed yesterday, uh, later on uh, during the day. Uh, before that, we heard that Ukrainian forces had certain um, certain effective counteroffensive actions in the area. We don't have exact confirmation of the locations, of course, but we definitely know that this is Bakhmut area, Bakhmut frontline zone. Uh, uh, in terms of um, Mr. Prihorzhin, um a statement, uh, it's uh, difficult to independently verify uh, his 
his what he's saying and his uh, information he's providing uh we can only say that official confirmation that we have is from the ukrainian uh, armed forces uh and the reason of this advance was effective uh, counter-offensive uh, actions in that area by the Ukrainian forces. Uh, again, uh, th this this is something that was confirmed, and uh, uh, and this looks like um, and this looks quite realistic if we look at the at the map because Ukrainian forces are keeping the defense lines and most importantly keeping the the main supply road. To, to the area of, to the city of Bakhmut and this allows them to remain there for for such long but again we have to remember battle is very intense in there and situation is extremely difficult and Russian forces also had certain advances in the area previously all right Anna thank you so very much stay safe thank you